make it something more. Um, how do we kind of, um, how do we kind of get a control over our feelings? Like you know, um, how do we, how do I make myself love everybody? At the minute, there are some people, there are some, there are some human beings whom I don't know. I just can't stand. I don't know if it's the right word, but you know. <laughs> but you know, I just don't want to be like that. But it just kind of yeah. stays in the mind. Yeah, you know what yeah, I mean? Yeah. I suppose it's control over the mind. Don't try to love everybody. <laughs> don't try to love everybody. Maybe try to, at least you can try some. Just try to be fair, but don't try to love everyone. Oh, well. Love in the sense. No, I don't mean you know yeah. you know affectionately, mm. but you know sometimes because uh, there'll always be one or two. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so it's perfectly normal then. It, of course, it's very normal. <laughs> so I'm not abnormal. <laughs> well, sometimes you have to. There's a love which is not. Uh, it is so all inclusive, and it's so free that they say Jesus loved everyone. No? But when he went to the to the temple and saw these people, you know, selling, uh, yeah, in that moment he was not on a love mission. <laughs> <laughs> he was. <laughs> is it? Be yourself. This is the way, and uh, and stay in this place that you've been shown this effortlessness, and leave the rest. The rest, the rest will somehow. Align itself appropriately. Really, what I'm saying, I'm telling you, it's so unburdening. We are trying to cultivate good habits. Ramana Maharshi said something very beautiful. He says, All good habits manifest spontaneously in the delivered mind. Meaning that when you see where you really are, automatically things come right. You don't have to try to be like this or try to be like this. You see? Because I don't feel that if there's a you loving everyone, I don't think you will be successful. You'll do ninety-nine, but your neighbour, uh, you want her, uh, <laughs> and you feel, oh no, no, I didn't do it, I failed, or so on. So don't do it. You're the Stay. first person to have said that. Yes, yes, it's all right. It's all right to not like some people, you know. Yeah. <laughs> Good. It's all right to feel. Uh, even the feeling of hatred can happen. It can happen, but you're not tied yourself to it. It's something that also arises if you see really gross injustice or cruelty. How can you say I love you? How can you say this? Yeah. You don't feel. You want to yourself give a good chop, <laughs> isn't it? Absolutely. It's natural. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So in the meantime, please leave that alone. Stay as that which is aware. Just keep staying. Stay as awareness always. Don't go to what should I do, what should I undo. Stay as the awareness, and immediately in this space of just being awareness itself, everything begins to slow down a bit, and your perspective becomes more clear. Your discernment is much more sharp, and there's more space in you, more peace. You see more clearly, and spontaneously also. You're not in a space of making decisions, but more that you recognize it's up and so yours. All the balance, everything is already in you. The potential. If you don't go through the medium of the mind to try and work things, stay only in this place of that neutrality in you. This is not being blank. It's not being blank, because even if there's blank, there's the awareness of blank. Stay as the awareness itself. Everything is showing up in this space, and immediately you feel the expansiveness in you. <clears throat> and a decision that you would have made five minutes ago completely thins out. <clears throat> and now there's space. Five minutes ago, you felt like oh, I can't spare even two minutes to look, and now there's infinite expanse. This is how changeful the conditions of the the environment of the emotions and the mind can can it turns on a penny. It's, it's like this. Don't get caught up in that. Stay as the awareness itself. There's always space. There's this huge expanse. Stay there. And when your attention has united with that space, somehow that recognition has a way of blessing every other aspect of your expression. It's touched by it automatically. This is the easy way. But if you want to cultivate good habits and do ten steps towards, then this is a different thing. And that's also a way. That is the, the snail's way. 
Uh, I will show you samurai way. <laughs> Quick. <laughs> Some people like the journey of uh, go and uh, yes, check it out and uh, enjoy. This is fine because it's the same consciousness is playing its role. But some, there is no more time for dilly dallying. They don't want to look around. They just want to go to get to that point. What is it to go to the residue? Residue, if there is one. True. You can take one year to be happy, or you can be happy now. What would you choose? No. <coughs> You're happy now. If you go to your mind to try and work at happiness, then you become very miserable. Trying to be happy is the most miserable thing. Yeah, you're right. <laughs> On the contrary, if you're feeling miserable and you say, "Listen, I'm not miserable enough. I'm only eighty percent. I want to turn up that. Where's that twenty percent?" And go very miserable. Then you start laughing, <laughs> and you find automatically, "But this is so ridiculous." But if you try to be happy, you know, try to be happy is like trying to act naturally. Uh, uh. You can't do it. <laughs> Stop trying and recognize this thing. <laughs> Look at this smile, my gosh. <laughs> huh? Now she wants to hide it. <laughs> Yes. Blessed Muji, what do you have to say to all the single people that are searching for a life partner? What do you have to say to all the single people that are searching for a life partner? Where are you? Show me your hands. Oh, is you wrote the letter? <laughs> Only one, only one dear to put the hand up. <laughs> what do you have to say to all the single people that are searching for life partner? <laughs> you don't know how lucky you are. I said before, life has given such a beautiful opportunity for the moment. Because people who sometimes are single, they feel a little bit lonely and they think, oh, it's going to be forever. Like, I'm going to be single forever and whatever. And, uh, and so the mind steps in and goes, yeah, you know, you better move quick. <laughs> 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 and the time when sometimes being single can feel really painful is in satsang. Because ego is thinning away. It's thinning out. And you know, it's looking for something to attach itself onto to get some more to buy some more time. You see? And so I say quite often eh, we have some very forced uh relationship quickly. The ego is trying to hold on because somehow when a relationship begins like this, it's like uh, you know, Satsang becomes a near death experience. So wow, that was a close miss, man. <laughs> Thank you for coming along, you know, rescue my ego a little bit or something. But uh really I would say to people uh, use the time well to really have some undisturbed time to focus on your own self. Be secure in yourself. So that in when the time come when life brings you one who is suited to you. This is the gift, in fact. You don't have to go searching. Someone will come unexpectedly, but you will recognize somehow inside, ah, somehow this is I'm so happy to meet someone like you. You see? Not by your own power searching and going through your checklist to see if they fit. It will bring you someone who will be a beautiful surprise for you. You see? 
and then you bring into this your fullness. What beautiful thing! Even satsang, some relationships uh, happen here, and some people go on to get married. Even you see, some of them here also, and beautiful thing to be somehow looking together from the same place when it comes to something so profound as, as the Truth. No? In the meantime, if something doesn't come along, don't be waiting. Use your full energies to, to be steady in the Truth. Because don't go into a relationship in a disadvantaged position. Don't go desperate. Nobody wants anybody desperate. They will only abuse you. But nobody wants anybody desperate. It's such a turn-off. Don't be desperate. Huh? If you are desperate, it means that you are so misguided and by your own thinking. So use your single time to throw off desperation and to be anchored in the Truth. Then, in the right moment, life brings someone who is so suited to you. And you feel, Oh my God, this, this person doesn't disturb your satsang. They, they, they actually encourage, intensify your satsang. What a fantastic thing! So, because you ask, what do you have to say to all the single people who are searching for a life partner? If you are not yourself, really, really, I'm not saying that you have to be a Buddha to have a a partner, you know, but at least you have your priorities in the right place. You don't put that the most important thing in life is not to be alone. How oh, can be like this? But somehow you you understand that, and this is your dedication to truth, to yourself, your devotion to truth. Otherwise, a life partner could become life sentence. Did I say that? Sorry. Not, didn't want to say it like that, but um, this person signed itself a a human now. Is it someone's name? A human now. A is the Christian name. Dot human now. So, what will your wife be or husband? Mr. and Mrs. Human now. <laughs> Next one. <laughs> that you are not the one producing yourself. Something is unfolding like this. And if there is some trust to let go, uh, just to let go of our projections, then your eyes become clear and you can see, you actually can see the way how the universe is moving. My God. And it's moving rather well, and it brings a lot of things in with it. It's, it's going along. This river is flowing fine. And, and what is a relationship? Can you... Uh, because I don't understand. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> that also is the destiny of your programming. It's inside there somehow. <clears throat> Those who will walk with you, some beings will walk with you for the duration of this bodily existence, up till the very end. Some will come with bright promises, bright lights, but they fade quickly. Others come, they don't look like they will go very far, but they are marathon runners, they are there with you all the time. <laughs> huh? Some will come in like this, boom, 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 and they go off again, they go. You're, you cannot determine this. You cannot determine this. But somehow, in the flow of your own unique river, you will see everything is as it should be. You see? Mm. Oh, it's, it's very, it feels very good that I don't need to determine anything anymore. Yes. Yes. And yet, sometimes, in the play, it might appear as though you do. <laughs> sometimes consciousness appears as though it determines something and feel very strongly. I feel I want to go here. But it's understood, this is the flow of consciousness. It wants to do this. It goes like this. I go like this. Another time, it's very passive. It doesn't do anything at all. Everything. Include everything. All the possibilities. Because nothing can harm you. This will be your understanding. Nothing can harm me. 
even if it takes this body away, it doesn't amount to harming me. When you've come to know what this real me, the real I is, this I cannot come and go. It is the weakness of all comings and goings, but it cannot be removed. And then somehow, it's like the tree of existence, it will produce and provide you the fruits that you need. It is doing this for everybody, but we don't see it. Ramana also said something, would you go on a train and still carry your luggage on your head? A train is going, but you're still carrying, no? You put it down, isn't it? Yeah. So when you are on the train of this understanding, you can relax everything. Perfect. Perfect. Of course, perfect. (laughs) (laughs) And now your own seeing will confirm it for yourself. It's not just a psychological trick. It's real seeing. Then you will see and say how generous the universe is. Um, it's, it has been like that um, in all the other things, so why not in this one, no? Yes, 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 yes. Yeah. Because whatever you think to be important, you want to take charge of. Then some little bumpy ride, turbulence come. Yeah. Uh, and relationship is big wave. Uh, oh, thank you, Muji. Even you're not responsible for finding the one who is compatible with you. Grace brings this one. Uh, perfect timing. Uh, so you don't have to waste any time kissing frogs. <laughs> <laughs> Very good. <laughs> <laughs> you like that, huh? <laughs> um, very brief question, and uh, it's my first time. Yes, yes. And very grateful for your very good. presence today. Um, I, um, I just like to know your opinion about. Um, How is it possible to love without getting attached, without attachment? How is it possible to love without attachment? Yeah. It's been, I think, Not my easy. problem all life. <laughs> and it's been it's my, yeah, 90% of suffering mm. all my life has been. Mm. If the love is mostly coming personally, and if it's only romantic love, if it's mostly been this, then uh, sometimes a lot of trouble come. <laughs> but the love that is springing out of your being, not out of your becoming and wanting and so on, but a love that is released through your freedom, through your knowing yourself, this one is, is all-inclusive somehow. It also has the fragrance of a private love and the love you have that has different expressions in it. But you're not bound to any particular expression, you see. And all of them can be satisfied in their own way. But if you are living and, uh, and the height of your aspiration is only for a partner in a romantic uh, setting, then it's very limited. And the life will bite, and it, and it should bite, because this biting is an opportunity for your greater freedom. You see? Uh, don't let the mind set um, the, the, the stage for your life, because it will always be a limitation. So sometimes, while you are on your own, if you are so lucky, 
sometimes. <laughs> then you can use this opportunity really to, 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 to deepen your understanding and to come home fully to yourself. So that if you come into relationship, and especially the ones which are, because of course, a, re a relationship with a partner is also a very important uh, tool of consciousness, because sometimes this type of relationship um, is very, very good at exposing some aspects of your of yourself which other relationships can't do, because it really digs deep into where you are uh, possessive or insecure or depending on something, which other relationships may not be able to really expose that. You see, so sometimes it's uh, and everyone. Uh, I mean, you don't have to wait to be perfect to have relationship. Relationship uh, is is there, but also to give some space to discover your your full being, who you really are. Because in moving into a relationship with that kind of roundness, that type of wholeness in yourself, you see, then if one is needed, then I don't know, maybe. I don't know if relationships have happened out of need. The universe is some, it's just a gift, sometime or so, that you can meet someone and together you bring strength and clarity and insight into each other also. It can be like this. But if you are living just for that, then it will be trouble. When you realize who you are, attachments won't won't interfere with your relating with other beings. There will be a great freedom, and then the love is really then free to really express itself without expectations, which are such a pain and that narrowness. Because when you carry that sort of, if you are loving someone out of desperateness, you know it's such a horrible state for both of you. So when you can come from your freedom, isn't it? And you know that if someone leaves you, you're not going to die, isn't it? Then you really are can enjoy. You will not compromise your truth for anyone. sees what doesn't change. But what I'm speaking about is very different from that. It's you, your inner self. And where is this inner self? It's nowhere you can, anywhere you can look in the world, anywhere you can go, anywhere, up or down, in, out, up in the sky, in the ocean, on the earth, you will not find your inner self. You have to find it where you are. Yeah, no? Then, what is this inner self? Is it different from the self that you know? Because if I ask you, tell me something about yourself, you may say, I was born in Romania, I am you know, 32 years old, I studied in this place, and this is my family, uh, this is my past, this will be my future, this you talk. All things which are also coming and going. You see? So, is everything that we see and are, is that always coming and going. You have to find something which is not coming and going, which observes coming and going, but it is not that involved in coming and going. Somehow it enjoys, it enjoys, but it is not attached to it. This is satsang, is what is going to introduce you to this beautiful discovery. And I'm here only, my life is only like this now. My life used to be about many other things. And still some of them I still do. I worked for a long time as an artist, painting and creating things. But uh, 
many things that I did in my life, I saw I was always searching for something, like some kind of perfect thing. I was searching, no? and I couldn't find it. I was a bit frustrated. No? I made many beautiful things, like many people, but that thing, I, I couldn't do it. Then when I discovered it, then all the, all the desire for the other things, it became more stopped. But I can still do them. I can still paint. I can still do all these things. But it's not so important. This is the most... I cannot say even this is important. I can only say uh, this is what I am. I can't say it is important even. It is just what I am. You see? And when a human being discover uh, who they really are, then a lot of fears and worry and trouble and all these go. It is possible to be, to be happy always. Also, even with some trouble, come, yeah, no trouble, okay. Still, happiness does not go away. A peace inside. The peace doesn't go away because some trouble come. No, the peace is still here. Little trouble come, if we get, no, it's okay, no problem. Because you realize there cannot be a problem for this. You just know it. And the problem generally has a kind of personal feeling about it. So, my joy is always to be in the company of the beings who have a little taste for this. They want this. They have tasted it. I feel it. And I want to be complete in this. Then I feel this is a real meeting. Real, it's a real, real good time to be in the company of beings who are appreciating or loving or wanting to be this. Because everything else we have tasted, no? With this tongue, many things you taste. With these eyes, there's many things you have seen. With this body, many things you have touched. Something inside cannot be touched, actually. It is so beautiful. Something inside is here, you know. I cannot even say that it is here. I can't, it, it feels naturally when you have a body to say, it's here. But it's not really just here. It is the way that we experience and say, ah, oh, it's, it's here. But it's not only here, it's, it's everywhere. Inside must come the desire to discover it. Otherwise, we continue enjoying living as we do. It's okay also. No problem. If you never realize the self, it's no problem. It's no problem for existence. If you realize the self, I don't even know if I can say existence is happy. Because it's a natural, natural thing. But one human being who realizes herself is uh, bringing a lot of positive energy, joy, wisdom to many beings without even trying. You're like a, a light in a dark space. Your presence even if you don't try to do anything, your presence is giving light to many things, many people. You want to say something? I'd like to get rid of the ego thoughts. You would like to get rid of the? Ego thoughts. The thought which are interrupting? What did you say? Or oh, the seeker of thought. The thinker of thought. Ah, cha, cha, cha. Huh? So you hear what she said? She said, I would like to get rid of the thinker of thoughts. She didn't say, I want to get rid of thoughts. I want to get rid of the thinker of thought. Is that? You understand this question or not? I don't just want to get rid of the thoughts. 
Because the thoughts by themselves is not a problem. Thought, thought yeah. by itself is not a problem. It's only when you believe in the thought or you identify, then the thought gets activated and becomes thinking. Who is doing this thing? So, if we are sitting here and somebody is reading a few words, maybe the same words we both of us hear, but one of us, one person is very strongly affected by what they hear and the other one, no. So, two people are sitting on the chair. Thank you. Somebody is, is reading one poetry. Somebody is reading a few words of poetry. And this one sitting here is, whoa, oh, oh, please stop, oh, oh. No? The other one, nothing. One is very affected by the words. The other one, nothing. So, you see that there's no power in the words. Because if there was power in the words, both people would affect it by the same thing. You see? So the power is in the mind. If the person is saying, oh, you know, like, oh, this is so strong, it's too strong. Hmm? The other one, what is strong? Nothing is strong. Same words, hmm? two people. One is feeling, no, no, please stop, you know, it's too intense. It's too intense for me. The other one, hey, what's the problem? No problem. And everything in the world of thinking is like that. No thought has power by itself. The power is in the mind of the thinker of it. And who is this thinker? Who is the thinker of it? Can it be caught? Naturally, you say, well, it's me. It's, you know, I am troubled by the thought. Here we say, it's not enough. You must identify exactly when you say, I. I am, I am so disturbed by this thought. Okay? Then you realize that this I, which is disturbed by the thought, can also change. The I also can be, after we talk a little bit, the same I is saying, no, I'm not disturbed anymore by this thought. So both the thought has no power in it and the one who is disturbed by the thought is not true. He can change also. You follow what I'm speaking or not? But if you get it, then a lot of things disappear for you. A lot of trouble gone. Because we are thinking that thoughts have power. You see? And also, many thoughts that come from your family tradition like this, you give power because you grew up with it. So you don't question it and so you accept this is true. So this thought uh, colors your consciousness and because you think this is, this is what I am. And then you can live all of your life believing this is who I am and it is okay. It produces a certain kind of life. It's okay. But in the life there are some beings who we say they are awakened, they are liberated, they are self-realized, they are Buddhas or something like that. Okay? They are not different from you. What is so different about them? They realize who they truly are. When they realize who, how, who they truly are, not just mentally, not intellectually, but, but completely, when they realize who they are, they are who they are. And other beings who have a love for what is true are attracted to them. Not because they read in the newspaper, oh, this one is attractive. No. Maybe you are just doing your shopping and you meet someone and you feel something. Say, oh my God, oh, why I feel this way with this? I don't know this. Who is this person? They go and ask, who is this man? Who is, it? who is this woman? Who is this woman? They say, this woman, she's a awake being. <gasps> so that's why something happened. So it's not propaganda. It's something in you is responding to some power inside this being. So this is the power of an awakened being. 
just their awareness is touching something inside you and whoa, whoa, whoa. Huh? Then, as soon as this happened, you realize something that maybe you're reading books for 20 years. But this, this is more powerful than a hundred books because it, it is inside. Whoa, whoa. Inside, what is this? What is this? Maybe you feel, oh my God, my God, my God, my God. Like, the life is so big. <laughs> the life is so big. But not just the life is so big. Your being is so big. That is the power of one who is more awake. Is that you are touched and they inspire. They inspire your being to open up its wings inside you. you know? Not to live like, like this, but something. Whoa! So you experience. You don't just believe. You actually experience. And that is called awakening to presence. I call it like that. Meaning that you have always been presence. But now you experience it consciously. And you feel that there is somehow, it's like your life has just been turned on and turned up. And you feel alive in such a way. Not only, it's not just a feeling also. Not just feeling. Your mind doesn't feel confused anymore. Okay, sometimes some thoughts come and a little bit, but quickly you are able to, no, no, no. Just don't bother with that. Before, you'll be spending a lot of time with the thoughts. But now something knows, no, 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 it's not worth it. It's not worth it, leave it. And your mind stays clear, like space. Also, you're not thinking your life. Oh, what I want to do in the next one month, in the next week. No, something just knows, no, I don't have to think my life. I am life. A river does not know how to flow. It just flows. Mm -hmm. A cloud does not know how to float. It just floats by. A flower doesn't know it is beautiful. It doesn't know, I smell like lavender. It doesn't know anything. Something in you is all of this and more than this. All of this and more than this also. I want to tell you a story before I go. Huh? Put some sugar for me. Yeah, there was one story I'm remembering now. It was two men who were very close. They were very close friends. From they were teenager, they are close. They used to meet and talk about many things. They loved each other very much. One of them was married. Hmm? Now he's a big man. He's married, and uh, they they have a son. And uh, but still, he continues to meet his friend. They used to go and sit under the tree, <laughs> you know. And they would talk and just enjoy. They enjoy. He enjoy the company of his friend more than his wife. He goes. They always sit together. They talk and they have very good time. No. Anyway, let's call one Mr. A and one Mr. B. Okay, to keep it simple, because the names are not so important. So, Mr. B is married. Mr. A is single, but they still meet and they talk. You know, like this. So Mr. B, who is married, he said to his friend, you know, my family left me a lot of money, but my wife is very greedy. And if I make her aware of this money, she's going to waste it. She's going to buy jewelry and she's going to want to walk and do all these things. And, and I don't want her to spoil my son. So I just continue, we just continue like normal people. We have like everybody we eat. But I'm putting this money under the house 
You see? I dig a hole, I put the money in a box. And I'm telling you, you're my closest friend and I trust you, the money is under the house. Exactly, I show you, okay? If anything ever happens, then I leave it with you, with your judgment, okay? He says, okay, thank you, thank you, that's good. So they continue to meet and they talk and they laugh and they cry together and all of this. But then life took Mr. A away and he had to travel. You see, traveling for three years abroad. And he traveled. At first they were writing to each other. The two friends were writing to each other. But after a while, life, you know, like this, they stopped writing. After six months, no writing. They continue living, you know. But two years later, no, Mr. B passed away. He died. No? His friend doesn't know. So now it's time for the friend. His contract is finished and everything. He's coming home now. He's looking forward to see his friend. I, oh, I miss my friend. A, B, I miss my friend B. So he comes home and he comes into, gets off at the bus in the center of his uh, town and he's walking to with his bags and he sees the wife of his friend on the street begging. Arms, arms, this. please help me, some food. And the son also is there. Help me, help me like this. No? So, oh my God, you know. So he goes to her and he says, Hello, Hama. She goes, oh, I woke up and I said, She says, Hama, you, you remember me? And she said, Yes, yes. You're a good friend of my husband. Huh? He said, Hama, what are you doing here? What are you doing? She says, Why? What happened? Why you asked me? She said, No, what are you doing here? Why are you begging on the street? She says, Oh, don't you know? My husband died for two years ago, one year ago now. We have no money, we have nothing, we have to beg on the street. He says, oh, I'm on. Uh, uh, oh, I have good news for you. I have good news for you. He says, what news? What news? He said, I have good news for you. Suddenly she started to feel better, like, you know. Yes? Yes. Your husband, my best friend, he told me he has money, but he didn't want to spoil you because he said you're greedy. Okay? But he put this money in a certain place and he told me where it is. You see? Please, come with me now. Come, come with me now. So immediately on hearing even the news, she brightened up and she's, oh, because he's a trusted friend. She knows I can trust you. And they went together holding hands. Come, come, quick, 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 no time to waste. They went to the house. She says, oh, come, come, take me to the shed. They find one tool, they start to open, take up the board of the house, of the floor like this, open. And then when they take it up, he starts to dig, chick, 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 dig. She says, you sure everything? So, chick, 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 chick. Down, 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 down. And suddenly, chick, 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 doom. Ah, doom, doom, doom. Ah, he starts to dig. And there's a box there. And he takes the box out. And yeah, because even he never saw the box. He opened the box and it is full of gold. Full of gold. He said, look, Amma, you never have to work again. You never have to beg again. You see, you never. And she, she's so happy she's singing, singing. Oh, thank you, thank you, thank you. No? Now, the point of the story, this money, was always under the house. No? But was she rich? This money belonged to her and now to her son also. It was there. But was she rich? No. This is what it means. This treasure is in everybody. But if you don't know about it, if you've not discovered it, huh? You are not awake. This beautiful light and life is in you. But if you don't know about it, then you could be just an ignorant person. Same way. This is what the masters share with everyone. Because they realize it. 
They didn't just hear about it. They went and dig, dig, dig. They find it. And they say, wait, this treasure is in everybody. <laughs> the same thing they're telling. But some people, they tell, listen, this treasure is in you. They go, go away. You don't know what you're talking about. What treasure, you know? So then you don't discover. <clears throat> this is satsang. Satsang is not telling you about it. You know, when he told her, first he told her, Amma, why are you begging? I've got good news for you. From, she, from he said even, I've got good news for you, she became upright. Why? Because she trusted him. First she trusted him. Hmm? Because she knows this is a good friend. He's a friend of my husband. He's not a joker. He's not a prank. And so she trusted him. Next, he didn't say, go and dig it. He says, come with me. Come with me. Together. So he didn't send her to go and do it. He says, no, come with me. A true one will tell you, look with me now. Not go home and do all this thing. No, do it now. Do it. Yeah. And then when they do, then he finds, ah, this, this thing, look, look, it's here, like I told you. And then what happened? Ah, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Because by herself, she would never find it. By herself, she would never find it. It takes someone who knows already, who has discovered, to then point to you, this treasure you have also. You're living like you're a poor person, but this wealth is in you, and you are begging. Hmm? Your father is the king of this kingdom, and you are begging, because you don't know who you are. This is the, the core message of satsang. Hmm? I have no joy to tell you, oh, you know, in another two years, if you practice, you know, you will get to the next level. No, I said, what level? I don't know. Suppose somebody, suppose someone told you, listen, one, your great uncle died and left you five million euro, and you're broke, you have no money. He said, oh, really, really? He said, yes, but one trouble, you can't have it for another five years. It's a horrible thing. What is a horrible thing? Huh? <laughs> so if you are told you have this rich, Yes. You have to find it today, no? You're not going to say, listen, okay, I'm going to chai shop today and, uh, you know, meet me on Wednesday. We, no, you want to go today, you want to find it. It's the same way like this. And this is what makes the satsang totally alive. Because it is not a promise. It is a pointing. And it's only for those whose minds are open to that. Because I am not going to show you me. I am going to show, first you see me, and I am helping you to show you you. <laughs> yeah? I'm happy to see me. Yes, 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 yes. Who we have been brought up to believe we are is not complete. It is only the description of an aspect of our expression. You see, who we have been educated and conditioned to believe we are is not the full picture. Everything we have been told about ourselves belongs to time. So one day in time it will be gone. And this is why a human being inside is a bit traumatized. What is traumatized? What it mean? It means that you can enjoy, you can enjoy everything, but one day it's all gone including you, pum, finito. Hmm? Thank you. <laughs> and um, so in one day it's all gone, like everything is gone. Why? Because everything you see, everything you see, it's like time says, all that you see, all that you know belongs to me. The time is like that. All that you experience, all you imagine, all that you see, all that you taste, all that you know, including yourself, belong to me. And one day it will be gone. The time is saying that. So if the, if the man, if the human being doesn't know more than time, then he is already afraid. Because if he is one day, I'll be gone. So I'll do everything I can to get everything now, 
because after it's finished, end of story. But the one who is awake tells you, that is only the top of the iceberg, okay? That is only, it is true, the body belongs to time somehow. It's a time body. It has a beginning, it will also have an end. Your mentality and your personality also is changing, coming and going, okay? But that which is aware of the change and is not identified with the change, that one, find out this one. Hmm? The body is changing and will go one day. Because it came, it will go. The mind, your thinking, even as you're alive, you see, your thinking is changing. How you believe and who you believe you are is always changing. And sometimes you're happy that it's changing. So that cannot be the ultimate state because it's always changing. Whatever is aware of the body's change and the mind's change, but it itself is not identified or attached to those changes, this one is free. I told you the, the example of these two birds in the tree. You see, I tell it over again because it's a good example. One bird is in the tree making things, making a nest, making a life. The other bird is above. The other bird, thank you, thank you. The other bird is on another branch just above. And this bird is only looking. This bird is only looking. He's not making any nest. He's just looking. And I say, these two birds represent aspects within ourselves. There's an aspect of ourselves that seems to be making a life and doing things, having a job, sending your emails, having Facebook, loving your family, taking care of your children, very active. And there's another position, which is the second bird, which just knows these things, just it's aware of the activities, but it's not directly doing any activity. You must come to know this second bird. Most people only know and identify with the first bird. Their whole life is only making and doing. Okay? And it's always changing. So spirituality means to discover the position of the second bird in yourself, which is the place where you are merely observing all of this, but not passionately. Just you see, but it's just come and go. Just like one day come and it goes. And one day come and it's a beautiful day. Everything's so beautiful, but it also go. Every day come. Suppose you're having a beautiful Sunday. Can you keep it for a bit longer, more than 24 hours? No, it will also go because Monday come or whatever. Everything is coming and going. And we know this thing. Is there anything that is not coming and going? You have to find this out. That which is aware of the comings and goings, but itself is not attached to them. It's not identified with them. Can you be aware of this? If you're aware of this, keep being aware of it. Keep looking at it. Keep looking from this place, which looks at the activity of your life, but itself is not doing anything. Keep looking and looking and looking. And what's going to happen? You start to fall in love with that place because it becomes so happy. You feel so happy, so alive. Some wisdom is coming. Joy is coming. Peace is coming. Space is coming. Attachments are going. Depression is going. Worry is going. Fear is going. But you are not going. You start to discover this. This is the beginning of real self-discovery. Just you begin to observe. Just keep observe, but don't identify. You find out, but wait a minute, I don't have to identify. I can look without identifying. 
I am drinking this coffee. I can enjoy the coffee. I don't have to identify as a coffee drinker. Just drinking coffee. If you ask me, who are you? I don't say I'm a coffee drinker. No, I just drink coffee. Not a coffee drinker. You see? So without identity, all your functions can continue to happen. You don't have to identify. And when you don't identify, you naturally begin to experience a spaciousness inside yourself. And gradually, this power stays. Because normally when you identify, this power goes out through your identity. When you identify with something, you give power to it. You give power to this. You give power to that. You give power to this. Somebody come, hello, you give power to that. Somebody goes, yeah, no. you give power to this. And then you're drained. And when you're drained, you have to sleep more. Because experiencing uses energy. And when you are experiencing personally, you use a lot of energy. Because it takes a lot of energy to be a person. It takes no energy to be your true self. If you are experiencing personally your life, then you're always tired. You're always tired. You're not married. You don't have anything happening. But you're always tired. You don't have anything to look after. You don't even have to look after a goldfish. But you're always tired. <laughs> always tired. Why? Because you use your mind too much, always thinking, what I want to do. Mm -hmm. And then you sleep 14, 15 hours a day. Because your body needs that time to recover from too much imagination, too much thinking. The one who is not thinking like this, who doesn't develop identity, does not need so much sleep. When they wake up, bing, they're up. Not trouble, not tired. So all these things I'm telling you is already what is happening in your life in the true way, but still we're not aware of it. You see? So when I speak with you like this, I speak almost like there's a seed that is put in your heart. And this seed will open and it will begin to grow something more understanding if you take care of this seed, meaning that you welcome it. You say, yes, yes, I want to just, I want to, to have a life which is just natural life. I want to be happy, I want to be peaceful. Hmm? I want to know the truth of who or what I am. Then this seed is happy with you. This is a happy place uh, for this seed to open. But if you say, no, I don't like this, I don't agree, I don't uh, uh, then you suffocate the energy of this seed in you. <laughs> it's a very simple thing. Very simple thing. And you know what, uh, what is also beautiful about this? Is that this is not just for your mind. I'm not speaking to your mind. I'm speaking to your heart. You know? Your heart knows my word. Your mind will argue, ah, well, I don't agree. What about this? What about that? You see? So if you give it to your mind, your mind will go, yeah, well, you know, it's nice, but, you know, yeah. I don't know. It's like this. But if you just allow it to be heard, just allow the space for it, nothing more. Just allows, yeah. Now you see as you go out and you move, uh, some light, light mm -hmm. feeling is there. I feel light. I feel very light. Mm -hmm. yeah? And the people speak with you, oh, no, 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 no. still feel light. <laughs> yeah? You lose your phone. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> oh. <laughs> still feel light. But still you take care of, yes. I keep this wish. I keep this wish. I surrender this wish to the universe, to God, to the self. This is the life I choose with my heart. Please help me 
please help me to live as I truly am and not as I've been conditioned to believe I am. And grace will come and make her home with you. You see? Because no one's life is an accident. No life here is an accident. You are here uh, by the will of the Supreme. Why? Because it enjoys to be you. He enjoys to be you, to experience in this body and experience uniquely in this body. And say, yes, I like to experience in this body. <laughs> yeah? You see? Then sometimes I want to be confused in this body for a while. Yeah? Then everything, nothing's working. Oh. And then one day to be unconfused. Ah, oh, ah. Oh. Whew. This feels really good. One day, one moment, either this moment, another moment, another year, another life, maybe, I don't know. This seed must flower. Yes. But yet I don't tell you wait. Wait for the seed, the seed to flower. Because this seed is the seed of beingness, the seed of wisdom. And also, when this seed flower, something is already here to watch it flower. Something is already here to say, ah, it's coming. This one who is already here, this one is timeless. The one who is already here to watch this seed open its, its leaf and its flower to the sun. This one who witnessed this, this one is timeless. This one is eternal. This one is the supreme. And you find this one inside your heart. Don't feel that the voice calls somebody else. I've come for you. Oh, sorry, you? No, you, you, it speaks to you. It doesn't say, I prefer you, I don't like you. No, it says you. Whoever hears my voice, it says, and welcomes this voice in the heart, in this heart I will come and live, he says. Where is it coming from? From inside, no? So before I go, let's just uh, just sit for a second and just don't think about anything. Just just be here. Don't even think about what I said. Don't think about it. Just then, just be here, and just feel your being. Don't think about it. Don't plan anything. Just be empty and. Don't imagine or think that you should be thinking some thoughts or you should be having certain kind of feelings. Be completely free, empty of any intention. When you have no intention, there is no tension. Everything is just as it is. No pictures, no words, just you. Imagination, not needed, not to imagine. You are perfect as you are. You don't need imagination now.
-hmm. And also, you're not waiting for anything. Don't wait. Don't wait for anything. Because waiting creates expectation. Nothing to expect. Just sit in your being. Nothing is waiting for you. So there's nowhere you need to be except right where you are. This is it. Nothing is more important than who you are right now. There's nothing you have to create, nothing you need to imagine. It's not required of you. But if imagination happens, it's okay. But you don't have to identify with anything at all. Now feel how beautiful and light your being is. This is your natural state. This is your natural state. And now, if something should happen, you're speaking with someone and there's a bit of argument, uh, don't fight with that. It's okay. An argument can happen. It does not remove your natural state. It just happens in your natural state. Don't believe any thought that says, Oh, now you've lost yourself. That's just a thought. So don't believe. Just be.
Now, I would like to have your attention just for a moment now. This simple state of being, hmm, which you have not done anything at all, you have not done any special breathing, you have not tried to suppress your senses, you have not done anything strange, just you are here. And you are again sitting inside your own heart, simple like this. And still, the mind is going to come and it is going to try and confuse you and to sabotage this opportunity for self-discovery. You see? But it has already happened. You have already experienced yourself. You are already in the experience of yourself. But almost always, some mind force will come and go, yeah, but you know, you got to live, and how are you going to live, and how are you going to do this, and I can't, I can't afford to be like this all the time, and so on. And this is where a lot of people started to fall down. They start to believe the mind. Yes, yes. Why? Because you've always believed your mind. She's going to say, yeah, I mean, it's okay, it's nice as a little exercise, but it's not reality. What happens when you go back to reality? And I says, what reality are you talking about? You mean you go back to unreality? Not reality. So, one thing that creates and, gives, and really distracts you from yourself is keeping believing how your mind works. Habit, just habit, and the reflex to keep going back to how you were thinking before and to doubt because many times in life you're not aware of it but you're doubting a lot of things, you're doubting yourself, you're not opening up to life, always sus suspicious, bit doubting, always thinking too much, imagining, projecting. So that is the habit and this habit suffocates your spontaneity. As you remember, recognize, observe and experience your existence again, all these things go away again. And this is what seems to take time because for a while you feel beautifully empty and so perfectly right in your life and then the mind comes in with all of these, you know, but how are you going to find a job and how are you going to pay your bills and what's going to happen if your boyfriend leaves you and who's going to like you like this and you know, and you start to, uh, 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 and then you go again with the mind and again you're back into this, it's this mind state and something is helping you. Grace is always with you, but sometimes you don't allow to trust in the grace. Because your life should have some trust. You should have some faith, some trust to say, but wait a minute, you know, why to be so suspicious about the life? The trees are growing. Are they suspicious about the weather? The river is flowing. Is it suspicious about the rocks? They just flow. Why so suspicious? And so you start to use your mind and then again you start to get tight. And I see you on the street and then you don't want to look at me. And I say, hey, 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 why you, uh, it's okay, Moji, I, 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 uh, why you didn't come to satsang? Uh, well, I just been a bit busy. I uh, uh. said, but why are you looking like this, like some mad person? <laughs> and then you might catch yourself, oh, uh, 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 actually, uh, what was that? Sorry, come out of it. <laughs> Only this thing. To recognize and experience your true nature is not difficult. Where difficulty is experienced is uh, somehow to be willing to open up or to let go of your attachments mm -hmm. and your fear. Because the mind comes with fear and then you start to believe and think, oh no, no, maybe, maybe it's not time to let go. And, yeah. But as soon as grace kisses your heart, hmm, you begin to detox. Huh? It's like you're detoxing psychically, psychologically, emotionally, all stuff that has been trapped inside from young, it starts to come up and you start to feel sick and tired and your mind says, you see what happened now? 
Look what Satsang is doing to you. <laughs> you know? Oh, you have you so sick. I said, instead of feeling, I'm detoxing. It's really good. For the first time, I'm getting rid of all this rubbish. Then the mind goes, ha-ha, oh, you're going to look like this for the rest of your life. Then you look in the mirror, oh, no, no, I don't want to look like this. You believe your mind. So it's good I tell you these things, because so many people, they have been somehow misunderstanding and reacting to the mind. And the mind then, when you want to be free, your mind, uh, you start to see that your mind is not kind. Your mind is not kind. Your mind is going to, the old habits are going to try and some of the seem like they're trying to stop you. It's not your friend now. But he was never your friend. But now you begin to be a bit suspicious of him, then all the bad things are coming. But only for a while. Only for a while. If inside your heart you continue to choose what is true and to trust and to say, yes, you know, yes, yes, but I trust what Muji say. I, I, I feel it and I've experienced already. I'm not going to just give in to my mind. And he goes, he goes. And he will try and catch you when you're a bit weak. Come again. And you start to look like a uh, bit. Then, you know, you, you catch it and you'll grow out of this. It is possible. You are here to win yourself back. Eh? It's like you're winning yourself back. What from a lot of conditioning, a lot of delusion. No? And although you might be enjoying your life to some extent, your life is a lot more beautiful than your present enjoyment. It's much more rich, much more complete. You see? Don't let the mind give you a little bit now and again. He has you on rations. You take a little bit now. Mm -hmm. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. No, your life is greater than your mind. Because you can be without your mind, but your mind cannot be without you. And you have to learn the difference. We are too confused. You are living like you are your mind. You are not your mind. You see? So I'm going to go now, but I just want to put my full heart, my full blessing to you to say whatever it is, if your life, if you begin to recognize that you have a greater life than your mind is presenting to you, hmm, that uh, there is a completeness inside you, but it has to be discovered. Hmm? And that I turn my full face to you, my full blessing for you. And that if you wish in your heart for freedom, that you come quickly to realize, to recognize uh, to the fullness your true nature and be happy. And that your light also help to bring others to that light, even if you don't intend to do it. But just by you being who you are, people's lives will be enriched by your presence. You, know? you see? Because light is not selfish. It shines on everything. You see? But uh, so just that you're, you continue more speedily now to give big boost to your, to your, your inner being and that this thing which makes you keep doubting yourself and, 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 and holding on to negative affirmations, that this becomes weak, weak, and to give you some space to grow strong in the spirit, strong in the spirit, strong in the truth, full power, full peace, full life, you see like that. So, so be it. Huh?